Hi, and welcome to Historical. In this episode, we're going to do a follow-up to last week's, where we looked at playing MP3s from an SD card on your ESP32. That was pretty basic, with no volume, and you can only play one song that you had pre-coded in the software. In this instalment, we're going to add volume and the ability to just drop many MP3s onto your SD card and get it to display them. Roll the titles. Is that it? If you want to jump to any particular section, then you can use these time codes and they're also available in the description below. We won't be covering the required libraries or the hardware you see in front of you now. If you want to know how to set that up, then see the previous episode, link in the description. Now it has been commented that my speakers are a bit small and, well, crap. So let's file them away and get something a little bigger. Now some of you may be wondering how our small devices are going to power this. Well, let's hook it up and see. The reason nothing is melting or breaking is because these speakers are still 4 ohm speakers. Just like those tiny crappy ones. The voltage is still the same, so the current and the power through these tiny speakers and these large ones is still the same. The SP32 or the I2SD decoders aren't being stressed any more than they were before. First off, let's control the volume. An absolute must if you have other people in your household who don't share your taste in music. The hardware required is a simple potentiometer of more or less any value, I'd say, but don't go with anything lower than 10k, as this will draw more unnecessary current. The reason it doesn't matter when it, whether it's 10k, 100k or 1 mega ohm is that we are just going to use it as a simple potential divider i.e. we are going to just use it to just split the provided voltage according to where the dial is turned. We will read off this split voltage with our ESP32 and set the output volume accordingly. We are not using this variable resistor to interact with the decoders directly at all. The software on our ESP32 will be in full control, so this is a software controlled volume. If you're not sure how these potentiometers can be used as potential dividers, then check out the link in the description below where I point you to another website that goes into it in some detail. There are three connections. One end needs to connect to VCC and the other to ground. The middle goes to our ESP32 to read the voltage on it via one of its ADC pins or just via one of its ADCs, analog to digital converters. So here on my board, you can see my three connections, with the middle pin going to pin 13 of the SP. I'll just pop that in now. Now the SP can read the voltage on that pin, which will, be va which will vary depending on how the knob is turned. Towards one end will be a low voltage and a low value read. Towards the other, a high voltage and a higher value. Let's look at the demo software for this. You'll find this code on the project page, link as always in the description. Okay, so from last week's episode, there's actually not that much changed on the demo software. We've got the volume pin, the pin we're going to use to read the voltage on that middle pin of that potentiometer, and we've set that to pin 13. We've also got a variable set up to actually hold the current volume. So if you just scroll down, we explained some of this last week in the last episode. But we're going to start off in the setup. At the end of the setup, we're going to start playing a file called amaze.mp3 from the SD card. That will start it playing. In the loop, we will get the volume. Basically, it's going to read that analog to digital converter and return a value from 0 to 21 based on the reading we're getting from that pin. And we will use the audio command from the library set volume here 
the set volume command from the library to set the volume to whatever's returned from this function. So let's just get that function fully on screen. So all we do, we're reading from that analog pin there with this line. So that would be a value between 0 and 4095 uh, for the default of the SP32. We need to convert that, obviously, from 0 to 4095 to, to a value of 0 to 21. 0 being no volume, basically, and 21 being the max volume. Volume 0 to 21 is just a range it's set by this particular library that we're using. So we need to convert our reading to something in that range. Now, on the SP32, and there's some waffle about it in the text here, it's not a fully linear line for the voltage reading going up. So we do a little bit of fudging around just because that the SP32 does not have a linear track for that voltage reading, for that ADC reading. So if it's less than 25, we just set it to zero. So we're getting no sort of fluctuations there at the bottom end. And if it's more than 4,000, we return maximum volume. Anything in between the 25 and the 4,000, we've got to this third, well, this last line, and we do a little bit of a calculation there, which will return something in the range of about 0 to 21. And that's all there is to it. So power up and test. Notice how quick everything starts working from boot. It's fantastic. So quick turn and down and then back up. This thing can get very wild. Just turn it back down. So you can imagine you could build yourself a half decent MP3 player with this. And because you're in control of hardware and software, you could make it really bespoke to yourself to just how you want it to work and behave. At the moment, the software is very primitive. So let's improve it a little bit by being able to dump any MP3s on the SD card we want and get it to play them all without having to call their names directly into the software itself. I've got three files here to test with and in the last video I said keep to eight characters for the file name but I've actually since found out that as I write this that the SD card library is now supporting long file names which is great and makes life a lot easier so just put your file names as is onto the SD card. Okay, everything's pretty much the same. In the setup, we've got a line saying play the next song. That's pretty much the change. In that original, in the last demo there, we just had it and playing that amazed.mp3 file directly. Here we're just going to say play the next song, which is on the, obviously on the first boot up. That will be the first song that it finds in your root directory of your SD card. In actual loop, nothing's changed. Just the same, setting the volume. So let's have a look at this play next song function which is the main workhorse of what's going on here it's fairly long so i'll try and keep it on screen as best i can so very basically it will do the entire this entire loop until it's found a song or it's found no songs if you accidentally put an sd card in there that's got nothing on it then it will work that out and in this line here it will actually report that it's found no songs to play and it will return and exit that routine. But presuming you've put something on there, which is, you know, you should have done really, shouldn't you? Then we will be basically coming down to this code. So if it's not a directory, we'll go into this bit. If it is a music file, that means one of the accepted ones that this library will play. So if we go down to here, this routine music file just returns true or false. Turns true if it's an MP3, or an AAC file. I'm not testing it with an AAC file, so I don't know whether that would work, but it has been tested with MP3. So if it finds an MP3 file, so yeah, that's the music file. So it'll ignore any of the junk that you've got on that SD card that's not a music file. Otherwise, it would crash the system. So presuming it has been a music file, then we'll put on the serial line, serial, serial line, serial monitor, what we're playing there, and then we'll actually play it, which is what that line there does. We'll say we'll find a song to play, so that it then comes out of that loop and returns to the code. Now, when this, is the, when this is the first call, as in from this setup here, it will return to just after here, won't it? And then it'll finish, it'll start running to loop. And it will just be going around looking to see whether it needs to change the volume. 
how does it play the next MP3? Well, the amazing author of this library has created lots of useful little routines. One of them is created, it's called Audio End of File MP3, Audio EOF MP3. What it does, if you write a routine here, and there's a few others he's written for other various things, but if you write this function, just put this function into your code, then when that MP3 song finishes playing, it will call this function. So when it does, we're just gonna say, hey, play the next song. And then down here, we'll come, we'll open the next file, which will be your next MP, well, might not be, might be a JPEG file or whatever it might be. It will start again, looking through for the next MP3 file to play. If it's come to the end, when there's no more files here, it will come down here and it'll say, have I already rewind this directory? If I have, then yeah, there's something amiss and it best means you've got an entry directory which we talked about before with no MP3s and all. But otherwise, if it hasn't already rewound it, then it will rewind it on this directory, on this line even, tell you that it's started to rewind it, set a little flag, and it'll start from the beginning then. And as long as you've got MP3 files on there, it will start processing down here where we saw before, right back to the beginning and repeat. I've put the three MP3 files on there and they're only 10 seconds long. I edited them down. So we can hear it playing each. So it'll play one for 10 seconds, it'll end, and it'll play the next for 10 seconds, it'll end, etc., and then repeat. Let's boot up. So that's the second song. And then the third song. And then it should repeat after this one. And again. So that's it for now. Hope that's been useful and inspired you to create your own music player. As you can see, salvaging some old speakers will give your project some real boost. If you like this video, then drop a like on it. If you'd like to see more, then caress that subscribe button into a sub. Please share anywhere you want to. And thank you very much to my patrons who support me. And thank you all very much for watching. Till next time. Thank you.